I, I just uh, I think the Republicans could beat him if they didn't fight among themselves. And uh, but this boy is awfully vicious. And when you oh, agree he with is. him, uh, he, he is absolutely with it. If you look at the people that he doesn't like, nearly every one of them winds up in trouble. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, I have had to tell uh, two or three departments. Yeah. That he's got a little man in. If I catch you touching this again, yeah. I will. You remember when you came to me the first week I was in office and told me what they were uh, messing around about your foundation? They do it with Truman. They do it with yeah. anybody that doesn't go along. If a congressman or a senator. Yeah. And uh, the other day they started to break up General Motors over here. Did you see yeah. that story? Yeah, I saw that. I never heard of it. The Attorney General never heard of it. And we developed it out. And there's one of his goddamn boys, this Ralph Nader. Well, I and this fella, well, Ralph Nader's out of the government, and this fella had left the government a year ago because oh. we were pushing in, and he took a copy of this stuff with him. Well, I'm, well. <laughs> so well, it's I pretty, old Joe, uh, <laughs> old Joe was pretty rough, and this boy is rougher than any of them. He's much different from what uh, Jack Kennedy was. Jack was not a vindictive person. No, he was. Uh, when you when you disagree with him, though, Mr. President Eisenhower, uh, you you have just committed the immortal sin, and then your taxes and your everything else. Well, I think you can take care of him. I'm going to do my best. And how is Milton feeling? Oh, no, no, he's pretty fine. I want him to go to Peru. It's blowing down there. Is These it? damn fellas are... Well, I believe he'd do it on a special assignment. I'm going to just get him to see if he won't take my plane and go down there. He's, this fellow is insisting on buying all these French planes, and yeah. uh, uh, we're just in a hell of a mess. His yeah. country is in bad shape. I, I thought he could go down and tell them uh, what is he a uh, fair evaluation of the problem. Well, I think uh, I think he might uh, be uh, susceptible. I'll tell Lady Bird you'll come some other time right. and uh, tell and, Ms. Eisenhower that we we just don't know anybody. We'd rather see you have a happier birthday. Well, Mamie is Mamie's writing to her this morning, and that's okay. why I called you right away to tell my my reason was that's good. <laughs> any time that you are down here, I don't want to bother you, no. but uh, any time you're here and you're free, I wish you'd tell uh, General Schultz uh, to tell my man that uh, you're going to be here uh, uh, for check up for a day or two and let me invite your friends and just quietly sit down. We'll have no politics. We'll just sit in the room and, and counsel and let you ask questions and then let them hear from you. I think it'd be good for us. All right. If you'll do it, just tell him to tell my aide, uh, Colonel Cross, yeah. who, who sends a helicopter and who he contacts yeah. all the time, that you're going to be there for a certain time. And then... Uh, if there's any of your old friends you'd like to have called in, we'd like it. And if not, well, we'll call in at least uh, uh, some of the folks like uh, Dirksen and like uh, uh, your friends on the hill, and then we'll get a, one or two fellows like uh, Good Pastor and Rusk sure. and some of them, and you can just ask questions, and it'll be good for the government. I don't, by you. the way, um, Mr. Yes. President, I'll say one thing. I'm getting a... Uh, they're getting me a, a helicopter for Monday. You know what I have to do? I have to go to a school, Quaker school, where two of my granddaughters, one of them 12 years old and one 15, and they are going to be my critics, and I, I'm scared to death. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. I'm glad you're young enough that you take them off. <laughs> well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk to them about their relationship to their government and their country. I'm going to talk, I'm going to bring right up for these little kids, I'm going to take up the word patriotism, and I'm going to say this getting a bad word, and I wanted just to convince you that it's a noble word. That's right, and we're short of it, Ray. We need it to emphasize right now. Uh, that's we what need I'm going to do. Well, that's good. And uh, you let me know anything in the world that uh, I ought to know in your judgment. Oh, say, by the way, yes, sir. Um, by uh, chance, Ayub, um, um, yes, in Pakistan, yes, yes, sir. wrote to me um, some time back. His ambassador uh, sent up his foreign minister to see me. So I wrote a note of appreciation to uh, IU. He ran a letter, and he, sa he, he said to me, there's nothing that this government desires more than to improve our relations with uh, the American government. Yeah. And uh, I've known this fellow a number of years, and I like him. I like him better than anybody that I have met in that part of the world. And uh, we've got this government run over with Indian uh, yes. pro-sentiment. And I picked, uh, I've got Bob Woodruff's, one of Bob Woodruff's better men, a fellow named uh, Olert, yes. and ask him to retire from Coca-Cola or to leave it, get a leave of absence, and go out there. got a letter from him yesterday. He's, uh, uh, I... 
he's one of, out of 100 ambassadors, he's one of my top five in my judgment, although he's a private individual. He worked for Bob Woodruff for 40 years uh, with Coca-Cola. And I'm doing it to try to, uh, to improve things with Pakistan. My trouble is, uh, damn it, uh, every time you start talking to them about something, they're just like the Red Chinese, the first thing they say, well, what about Kashmir, and can't you make them give Kashmir, and then you can't get beyond Kashmir, and I can't settle Kashmir, and just like the Red Chinese, when they sit down with you, the first thing they say is, okay, are you willing to turn over for Mosul? And we say no, and they say, okay, we won't talk anymore, and that's all it is. And I told Olert to, that I had written to President Kennedy that all the people I met in 27 countries, I thought this was the ablest man, and he had more physical appeal to me and more intellectual appeal and more character appeal. He's trained at Sandhurst, you know, yeah, and I know. That, uh, than anybody I'd met. And we just got along famously. He and I did. I had his camel driver over here. But then the Indians got in that fight out there, and I took our equipment and hit him first, according to the Indians. And so we had to lecture him a little bit about he promised us he'd never use our equipment against India. And we gave India that assurance. And then when he did use it, they came back and said, well, your credibility is no good. So we had to lecture him a little. And since then, we we have not uh, been as close as we ought to be, and then I've been worried a little bit about him playing with China all the time. Yeah, well, he, I've, uh, I talked to him about that. But Olert, Benjamin Olert, O-E-H-L-E-R-T, is our ambassador, and he was with Bob Woodruff of Coca-Cola 40 years, and I think that he is a, a conservative, prudent, able fellow that has my complete well, confidence, good. and I think he'll appeal to Aoub uh, if we have a chance to let him work his way in. Well, that, uh, that's very good, because... Um General, now one other thing, uh, in connection with uh, anything that you do, I hope you realize you're our greatest uh, public asset, and if you will let uh, Colonel Schultz, or General Schultz, uh, I, I looked at your staff the other day, four or five people, and uh, uh, I don't know how in the world you do what you do with it, but when you get ready to do anything, don't be so shy, I've got, I made you quit riding around in cars and let them steal your stuff out, but you call, tell General Schultz to call a good pastor and say, I want these papers brought in just like you would as president, and let them show you everything that's happening, and let as many stay there to help prepare and summarize it as can. I've got 40 people working with me, and you've got four over there, five, and when you get ready to do something, you let it be done because you're not doing it for, uh, for uh, uh, to advance your own popularity. You've had everything that this country can give, but you're doing it to save your country, and uh, it needs saving. So I'd like for you to do a little bit more uh, 
and speaking to the people of the country. And that's something for a Democrat to say to Republican in election year. <laughs> but I just know that you're going to be Republican and you're going to be for your party, but you're also going to be for your country in this system. And that's what we need, and we need bad. And I'm, uh, if I didn't have Dirksen, I'd be in one hell of a shape. And well, if, if you'd had to rely on Bill Nolan and Otto Passman, you'd have been in one hell of a shape. But <laughs> Sam Rayburn and I, Sam Rayburn and I knew that you were a patriot, and we tried to show it as best we could. And you have paid us back a hundred percent with good interest. Well, I'll uh, I'll do my best. Sir. I know it. And let let the uh, Shields tell good pastor what all you want, what all you need in connection with any appearances or articles, so that you uh, so you 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 can say to the public that uh, that you know what the hell's going on. And I'm going to send Bunker to see you when he gets here. Fine, fine. Okay. Bye. Thank you for coming. We'll miss you, but uh, we'll do it some other time. Thank you. Bye.